I am on Blue Mound in the center of Milwaukee County. This is a neighborhood known as Story Hill. Here we are, uh, season nine, episode one. We're meeting John Gerda in the city. We're not on a bike trail. We are in the middle of Milwaukee um, on a city street. And here's John. Hey, John. Hey, John, how are you? We're in a beautiful neighborhood called Story Hill. Yep. So what's the story of Story Hill? Uh, it begins, John, with a guy named Hiram Story, hmm. who comes here from Vermont back in 1843 to farm this land. And a storm changed his plans. The, the story is that high winds blew down a big tree on his land and exposed a bed of high-grade dolomite, which we call land and stone today. Yeah. So he switched gears. Uh, instead of growing corn, Hiram decided to open a quarry, Story Quarry. And where was that? It was right under what's now the North parking lot at Miller Park. Really? And it was open for nearly 80 years, supplying Milwaukee with building stone. And so it got pretty deep. Uh, when did people start moving out from the city? Uh, first ones had to be carried out here. Uh, carried out? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Calvary Cemetery <laughs> opened back in 1857 down here on Blue Mound Road. Yeah. And that became the final home for a lot of Catholics. It took a lot more time for living Milwaukeeans to settle out here. And the problem was the Menominee Valley, which was so steep it was hard to cross. There was no road bridge across the valley until 1911 when the first Wisconsin Avenue viaduct is built. And that opened the door. You know, that's the start of the automobile era uh, in America. So you had people kind of flocking out here in their Model Ts uh, looking for lots. And they found Hiram Story's descendants waiting for them. Uh, the Story's open Story Hill subdivision right here along Woodlawn Court back in 1911. And a man was so brisk, they opened two more south of Blue Mound back in the 1920s. And who would come out and build? Story Hill attracted people who were doing pretty well, uh, lawyers, doctors, business people. Uh, one of them was a sales executive named John Tracy, uh, who moved into the house right here behind you hmm. uh, back in, not long after it was built back in 1914. And the Tracy's had two sons. Uh, the younger one's name was Spencer. Spencer Tracy. Spencer Tracy. Father yeah. Flanagan lived in the neighborhood. The same guy. <laughs> so that was early here. Um, how long did development last? Uh, the big decade, John, was the 1920s. Okay. Uh, that's when a lot of these storybooks, stucco and brick and stone homes were built. Uh, the last open lots filled in after World War II. Uh, by then, Story Quarry was closed. It became a swimming hole and a garbage dump. Uh, but there were, there were better things, bigger things to store for the area. A county stadium opened as a new home for the Milwaukee Braves back in 1953. Hmm. And just a few years after that, the stadium freeway interchange opens. So all of a sudden, this had been kind of rural and it became the center of action. What, what a neighborhood today? What's it like? Uh, in some ways, not a whole lot has changed. Uh, the originals are long gone, of course. There's a new ballpark, mm -hmm. uh, a new team. Uh, but this is still a very comfortably middle class neighborhood. A uh, strong tradition of civic involvement, pride, and a lot of city leaders as well. So Story Hill has a, a lot of happy endings. Yeah. Population? About 2,000. And boundaries? Uh, pretty simple. Uh, Story Hill runs from Interstate 94 in the south up to uh, Menominee River on the north and east to uh, North 44th and behind us here at Holly Road in the west. Could you live here? I could. You could? Yep. Good. And is there much biking? Uh, Hank Anger State Trail is just about four blocks that Is way. that where we, where we caught you from? Uh, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But, but, well, but, but I'll head there. Go there now. <laughs> okay. okay. Thanks, John. <laughs> see, see you, John. <laughs> No, I'm serious. Quit staring at me. We actually have five shelter campuses in different parts of the state. So this is the oldest one mm -hmm. and the biggest one. So there are about 230 people across the organization and another few thousand volunteers helping to make all that happen. Volunteer Rabbit Socializer. That's a great job. What's important to know about this organization? People think that animals here are dying when they run out of time. 20 years ago that ended, and we taught other people how to end that. That's a really important piece, too. That's, Absolutely. that's really important that people know that. It, it revolutionized the field of animal welfare, yeah. and it's, it's, it is the central piece of our work. Pretty soon you'll start to see a line form. We don't open till noon uh -huh. for adoptions for the public but people will come. So about half the people who, who check in end up adopting that, that very right? day, yeah. This purse, 
It's the cat, it's not me. Okay. <laughs> if you came back tomorrow, they would not be here. Cute. Come on, kids. Come on. Look at the pups. We're all about getting them all yeah. animals out quickly. For those, it's not just about adoption. We do programs for kids. We do programs for challenged neighborhoods. Yeah. We have our wildlife center here. What's what's brought in wildlife wise? Somebody found a baby something, and you see, you're looking around at all kinds of enclosures. Oh. That'd be funny. They are now old enough that they can be outside. We see about 140 different species of wild animals a year. Remarkable. This is not fancy, right? You're seeing yeah. beach umbrellas and all kinds of stuff. This is not government work, right. right? Your tax dollars are going to other things, and God bless. It is individual people. At a cost across the whole organization, it's $12 million a year to keep these lights on. Yeah, that's and that amazing. is overwhelmingly provided to us by individual people writing $25 checks for which we are so grateful. It's incredible what we can make happen because of the number of individual people who want to pitch in in whatever way works for them. And that's every year. Every year. This used to be called Dairies. Yes. It's now Dugout 54. Yes. People know you from Kelly's Bleachers? Correct. Great story. Back in the day, you know, I got a great opportunity when, uh, before Kelly's was Kelly's, it was called the Main Gate. Okay. My uncle gave me an opportunity to start bartending for him and see how I like the business. You know uh, all of the odors up and down this? Yes, we do. Experience with each and every one of them and great people, great operators. Yeah. Great, great block to hang out on. Kelly's Bleachers is not yours anymore. No. But they kept your name. 100%. When did Dugout 54 open? Dugout 54 opened basically January of 2016. 2016. Yes, yeah. correct. And what we tried to create here was a craft bar experience and not be like anybody else on the street. A lot of things on that board, as you notice, they're all color coordinated. So sure. they're, they're green, it's an IPA. Oh, and then, and what's the blue? Lagers or Pilsners. And okay. If you look at 12 tap handle, it's got a yellow what's that sticker mean? on it. It's going to mean it's going to be poured in one of these glasses. Why is that? And uh, just the style of beer. Style of glass beer. You pour it in. That looks good. Who's your crowd? Who, who shows up here? Is it is it the people from Dairies? Or are they are they still coming? They're still coming. They you are. You come here at Happy Hour some days and you look at them and you're like, wow, you guys are still here. <laughs> and we're finding out as we built this place up, parties are just coming in greatly for us. So the they bathroom's should. getting built up. We gave it a new look, brought in some bigger screen TVs. So it's become a, a full-time space for us now. I bet people are really happy you're back in the street. You know what? It's been fun. It's been I a bet. great opportunity. It's great to bring this here and it's and it, it's, yeah, it's great to be back. 100%. And if people show up, they may be able to see you? Like, you may be back there? That beautiful woman behind the bar got me bartending again. How did that happen? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's how it works. Shh, <laughs> happy wife, happy wife. <laughs> now that'll make air. <laughs> it was great talking to Kelly at Dugout 54. Um, look at what's Kitty Corner. The uh, gravesite of Jeremiah Derry Hagerty, the guy who used to own and run that place. Um, yeah, I guess he just wanted to be close, and I just want to tell you, Derry, Kelly's doing a great job. The topography of this land really needs to be admired, doesn't it? It's beautiful. It's right? really kind of it's, beautiful. It's beautiful. You are the administrative historian. Correct. Yes. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. So too. you know a lot about this place, don't you? We were founded in 1857. We're just slightly younger than the city itself. Uh, how many acres is it? 65. 65 acres. And you're an employee of the Archdiocese of Milwaukee, Correct. is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And do you know? Do you have any idea how many cemeteries the Archdiocese? The Archdiocese owns and operates eight. This is our oldest one. Milwaukee-centric? Who do I know that's been buried here? Well, I think if you know your Milwaukee history, yeah. Solomon Juno should ring a bell. This was actually put up by the Historical Society in the late 1940s. Oh, OK. And then his actual stone is right over here. Yeah. Frederick Miller is here. Is that right? Yep, right over here. Fred Sr. Patrick Cudahy wow. is here. And this is bigger than my first apartment in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> but when you really think about it, everyone here played a role in building Milwaukee's history. This chapel on top is called Jesuit Hill because these graves are the Jesuit priests that mostly worked at Marquette University. So 1899. Yep. Dedicated 1902. 1902. Can you imagine what? So with, with every Jesuit burial, do you think they had the service in this building? That was the plan. Wow. People are always afraid of cemeteries, but all it is is mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters is what's buried here. So you do cremations? You do burials? Does that mean you dig? I have been able to dig. I've been doing this for 18 years. I buried all of these oh, you did on, in this row since I've started. Do you have any idea how many Civil War veterans are buried on this land? Approximately 300, two of which uh, were awarded the Medal of Honor. 
We are a patriotic and historical um, society. We're chartered by Congress. We draw anywhere between 400 and 600 people every Memorial Day. That's great. Uh, why do you celebrate this at Calvary? Because our tradition goes back to this cemetery back in the 1890s. Every Memorial Day at uh, 10 a.m., and if the weather's bad, we're in St. Vincent Pilati Church sure. right across the street. Another landmark building in the neighborhood is Holy Cross Parish. It's no longer Holy Cross. Now it's St. Vincent Pilati. I know you're thinking, wait, I thought that was on 76th and Blue Mount. That is St. Vincent Pilati West. This is St. Vincent Pilati East. So if you're not from this neighborhood, this is how you might know it. It's the entrance into Miller Park, right off of Blue Mount. So you go down this hill? Yeah, right here. And I can beat all the slower people, and then I just walk right down, right down that way. And how far do you get before somebody says, there's Baseball Bob? Oh, I'm probably there. <laughs> baseball Bob, why do they call you that? Because I go to every single baseball game, and I live here because the stadium is right down the hill. That's why you live in this That's neighborhood? That's the only reason. I bought the house 36 years ago. Haven't missed a game since. You haven't missed one Not game? Not one game. I watch every game on TV. I haven't missed one of them either since 1970. Yeah. I never missed a day of school from fourth grade on either. Oh, you did? Whatever I do, I never missed a day of work. So your first Constantly. game, do you remember the first game ever going? Yeah, it ended in a tie, if you can believe it. The only tie ever in the Brewer history of Milwaukee. And that was your first yeah, game? Yeah, yeah. And what was the 1970, age? May 11th to 7th. <laughs> but it was really fun. That, that's my original seat from County Stadium. Seat number one? Seat one I had back then. I, that's one thing Miller Park, they put me next to the dugout in seat five. I'm in what they call the owner's box. <laughs> I sit next to the Brewers dugout in the third row with the Antonazio family. How did that happen? Just, well, actually, I had the seat. Mm -hmm. And then he bought the team and he wanted to move me. And this one here is Mark Antonazio and his wife brought me one, right. and he loves to tell that story. Oh, good. How I wouldn't, you know, I, can't, I can't move that guy. The Old Time Ball Players Association gave me an award one time for being the fan of the year. So you have one seat. One seat. Great. I bought it the day after they lost the 82 World Series. I wanted this whole wall full of World Series picture. That's that. <laughs> yeah, I used to come home horse and stuff. Now I just, oh, well. <laughs> it's part of getting mature, I guess. <laughs> Now they'd be extra nice to us, they'll give us an extra set of the bobbleheads. Like I needed like a hole in the head. An Associated Bank has a special door just for their members to get in. Oh, so you're... So I switch banks, just for that reason. So Bob, if I met you here... Yeah. ...on the hill... Yeah. ...I could walk over sure. with you. So if I got two seats, but they weren't yours, would you sit with No, me? I'm sitting in my seat. You wouldn't sit with No, me? not you, bro. I mean, nothing against you. I'm not sitting with anyone. We're talking with Dwayne and Lisa Rodriguez. If you watch the show and if you have for the last nine years, uh, Dwayne used to be on the other side. Like you were, uh, shake your camera once for me. Yeah, that's what you used to do. Never that yeah. shaky though. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but we're talking about this neighborhood, this great neighborhood that you live in, mm -hmm. um, Story Hill. Yeah. And this is your house. Yes. Yeah, it's perfect. It's a really beautiful house. It is. Yeah. yeah, there was like a wall here and like a door there for the little pantry. We've done pretty much all like the big ticket items, so when it comes time to sell, someone's really lucky. Yeah. 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 Talk about what made you move to this neighborhood. We would go for walks in this neighborhood, and we just love the neighborhood. Our realtor, she told us ahead of time, hey, you know, this place is going to go up for sale. So we came over here, we looked at it, and then we put a bid on it right away. Before it even went on the market? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's how it works in this neighborhood, mm -hmm. isn't it? They go we quick. heard that story here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, one place just sold over here on Story mm -hmm. that was on the market for three hours. Oh, yeah. 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 The number one thing is just location and where, where it is in the city. You're still in the city of Milwaukee, yeah. but you are not in downtown. You are close to downtown, five minutes away five, six minutes away from Summerfest. We can walk to the ballpark if we want. We take our Vespas. And yeah. could there be a better name for our neighborhood? Everything looks like it's from a little fairy tale story. I think it, some of the homes around here are just adorable. And people probably believe that's how it got its name. Yeah, yeah. And But it's not. Yeah. John Gerda told us that what Story is the name of the person who owned the land. Mm -hmm. OK, there was a man named Story, and he built the hill because he dug a big hole because why because that used to be a quarry it used to be called story quarry now it's the north parking lot of miller park story quarry some of the neighbors called it story hole i'm so glad that the neighbor turned out to be story hill yeah for your information now wow. it's story hill nice. so don't get all story hill like yeah. oh, <laughs> <with> it, okay <laughs>
There is such a variety of houses in Story Hill. Um, this is one of a kind in this neighborhood. It's a Sears catalog house. It's called the Osborne. This one was the 1926 model. They delivered all of the product by rail, and then you either hired a contractor or you built it yourself. And the cost? Anywhere from $1,600 to $2,200. This probably went for $2,000. Sears catalog house right here in Story Hill. Um, so this house was owned by O.C. White, who was an African-American uh, DJ, I can't tell you the year, but I have met um, several uh, Department of Public Works workers who have said, we've been at your house in the, I think maybe the 70s, and they said Any, anyone who was an African-American entertainer was in this house. Came here. Uh, I think Aretha Franklin was one of them. Is that right? Um, Pointer Sisters? Pointer Sisters were here. Oh. At least that's what they told us. So yeah. they said this house used to have many, many, many parties. Square footage, what do you have in your house? Uh, a little over 4,000. Yeah, I think it's just under 41. <laughs> It's a big house. Yeah. It's a big house. <laughs> and, and how, let's talk about how, how and, and when you got this. Um, Actually, we got this house just by driving by, and uh, I said it was my favorite house. And that was 19 years ago? Yes. I didn't know we were looking for a house. You, <laughs> you didn't? No. It was just so beautiful, and uh, yeah. yeah. And we like the Brewers, so uh, never thought we'd be living at the entrance to the stadium. But we really do, don't you? <laughs> we really do. And we is really it an do. odd sort of experience that those first couple weeks? It's actually a really fun place to live. Mm -hmm. Isn't it yeah. great? Yeah. What we found kind of remarkable is that half of the people who own in this neighborhood are part of the Neighborhood Association. When I first joined, it was actually a very serious organization because they were talking about double decking the expressway when they were widening I-94. Oh, yeah. And it would have been devastating to this neighborhood. Knock on wood, because uh, it, it, it's never over till it's really over, right. but it looks like it's been a success. Doing Park, Michael. Yes. We're in the Story Hill neighborhood, and I had no idea that there was a high school called Doing Park. There's not. There isn't. There's no high school in Story Hill. So you guys, you know what? Yeah, you've challenged me, but I found something that I didn't know existed. Doing Park, 53rd and Wells, and John, look around. It's beautiful. The soccer field is used by Wisconsin Lutheran High School, their JV teams. They're out today. They're, they are, and yeah. then weekends, it's all teams from the area. And then the par three golf, yeah. you get nine holes. Stop, one more. And then there's basketball hoops where kids come out and play. They've got foot golf. Foot golf. Foot golf where you kick the ball like a soccer ball and you kick it to the hole rather than using a club and hitting a golf ball. Yeah. Oh, no. So the people in the neighborhood are not going to be happy we're talking about it, John, because this is kind of their hidden treasure. Yeah. But you know what? we got to let people know about it. Share it. Share it. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, John. <laughs> hey, I'm in Bluff Park here in Story Hill and the neighbors told me that you can see the fireworks from here. So I am all set up. I'm ready to go. I am, I'm the first here. All I've got is um, two days and eight and a half hours. Can't wait. So this used to be um, a parking lot almost, yes? Correct. Back when uh, County Stadium was still with us, they used this as overflow parking for large games, opening day, a Cubs series. Yeah. And also when the Packers used to play here. So yeah, this would be all totally filled with cars. And when did the neighborhood say no? When they built Miller Park, the neighbors got together and said to the county, let's make this an actual park. We don't want to be overflow parking anymore. Let's be a park with amenities for families and anybody who just chooses to want to be in some green space. It speaks to the Neighborhood Association, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yeah, it does. neighbors said this is what we want for our lives. Correct, very engaged. So we're in Mitchell Park. No, we're in General Mitchell Boulevard Park. Yeah. And if I had a dime for every time people came here looking for the domes, I'd be a rich woman. <laughs> so it's not Mitchell Park, McGivern. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big, beautiful sculpture in this park. Yes. Can yes. we talk about what that is? Sure, it's a tree of life installed and dedicated in 2002. So the park was brand new after being reconstructed, and uh, we were very happy to have the new sculpture installed here. We're right off of Blue Mound. Is this Correct. your downtown? Is this what you consider? I would say yes. This is our, our commercial strip, if you will, right yeah. here. We're a little enclave here in the middle of the city. And when I say the middle of the city, we're the geographic center in Milwaukee County. Yeah. What's it like on a game day in your neighborhood? Well, anywhere between 25 and 40,000 new friends will be in the neighborhood. 
So there's one thing that if you lived in this neighborhood, you'd be so grateful for, and if you were a visitor to this neighborhood, you'd be like, oh, come on, that. But oh, come on, you understand, don't you? These are the bells from your old church. Yes, we moved uh, after World War II uh, over here uh, 70 years ago now because there's been a continual immigration of Croatians uh, to the United States, uh, uh, we still do have uh, Croatian language mass, uh, but we're the only one in Wisconsin. Oh, you are? Yeah. yeah. We have English masses, obviously, for the people. Who, you do? Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is where we have our masses. Uh, the high point is the uh, tabernacle, where we Catholics believe that Jesus himself is here, so you know, he's, sure. he's a resident of the Story Hill neighborhood area, too. So, yeah. so it's... Uh, <laughs> former school, we have uh, our hall where people will come together for parties and things like that. And we're known for doing a lot of cooking. Go oh, party! Hey. Mary, introduce our friends here. Dana, right. Anka, Anka. Anka. Lutza. Lutza. Can we pickle our own cabbage? So Depends. did your mom do this? Um, my mom, my grandma, my dad, my... They all did it. They, and you we still do it. Up. We grew up on this and we still do it. If you have a true creation, dinner, then you have it. Yeah. It's called sarma. It's called sarma. Yeah. In, the, in the Irish family, it was called a uh, just a cabbage roll. But it's sarma. It's sarma. Creation, right. Is this, is this a family recipe? No, the it's, pork? A parish, it's a parish it's recipe. It's a parish recipe. Yeah. So this is sacred heart sarma. This is sacred heart sarma. What do we have in here? Pork. Pork, pork. pork and ham. Yeah. Pork and ham. And a little bit of beef. Just kind of pat it in with this other hand. Roll it under. There you go. Now, take this end mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. make it nice and tight. Just keep okay. rolling. There you go. How's that? Not bad? Very so, good. Not very bad. Good. Look at Not bad at all. So October is the big Sarma sale. Yeah. And how many of these would you go through? Between three and 4,000. No, you don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three or 4,000? Yeah. Right. And you roll them all? And we yeah. roll them up. How's that? Uh, Lutza made homemade bread. Apple strudel right here, which Anka made. It's uh, something that you're gonna remember where you came from. Right. That, and, and that's the point of all of this, isn't yes, it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Try to and keep the tradition going. Can you find some good sarma in Croatia? Not as good as Sacred Heart. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming over tomorrow. <laughs> it's delicious, isn't it? Story Hill, BKC. I'm thrilled to be here. Bottle, kitchen, cocktail. That's the first question always, isn't it? It is always the first question. <laughs> That's delicious right there. Yeah, that classic combination yep. of, the, of the mustard and the pickles and the ham. Story Hill has primarily, you know, bars on this street, but we really felt this neighborhood would and has supported what we're doing here, a little more of an upscale food concept. Yeah. So we have crepes during the day, which again, kind of bring in that Euro cafe kind of style. It's actually a crepe madame, but with the egg on it, but we call it a crepe monsieur just because we wanted to call it that. Yeah. So Anyways, but it's a crate filled with nice, a nice pulled ham. Joe wanted to not be limited by cuisine. He wanted to do something that was more of a combination of things. Yeah, so that's hand carved to order and it's built onto the sandwich. Uh, so roasted beets on the side with a little pork cheese and mint. It's what our business is built on, that high quality local product. So it's yeah. all coming from, uh, I would say, within 50, 60 miles of, of Milwaukee. No, oh, they're good. And I had always wanted to do a restaurant that included a wine, beer, and liquor store because people say, I love this bottle of wine. Where can I get it? In this restaurant, I can say, right over here. Roasted cauliflower, it has a little chili flake, and it has oven roasted dried tomatoes. And is this on all the time? Yes, and it's one of the most popular vegetables right now. Yeah. So. When I grew up, it wasn't, just so you know. <laughs> We're more of a traditional a la carte menu uh, during the day, and then at night, we do more of a shared plates concept. It's a small restaurant. We're only uh, 75 seats, yeah. but we do a lot of different things inside this building, and everything is from scratch. Black Shoe Hospitality, can we talk about that? Sure. When we got to, to the point of opening Story Hill, we felt like we needed a group name. Yeah. And Joe was getting up one morning and putting on his black kitchen shoes. <laughs> We're not talking about, you know, patent leather here. We're talking about that work shoe. Yeah. Kind of speaks to who we are. We don't have a rich uncle. It's just you know? <laughs> us in the bank, right. and we need to make it work. And yeah, there were some people who said you should put this restaurant downtown or east side, but we just felt this neighborhood uh, would support it, and it has. I really love Story Hill, which is right out of a storybook. Another great Milwaukee neighborhood.
<laughs> hey, mailman. Oh, show, by the way. Oh, you do? I really here, do. God, step over here for it's just that, a second. Is this your route? Yeah. It is. Yeah, I've so had it five years. Five years. It took me 24 and a half years of seniority. It was the route I always wanted. To get this route? Yeah. Why is that? Uh, the people? Uh-huh. There's, there's this really strange, well, not strange, it's wonderful sense of... of um, Excuse me, you two can leave. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm Sorry, kidding. you guys. <laughs> But yeah. no, I really do like the show. Thanks. I, I, I love to follow it. Thanks. You guys do a heck of a job. We appreciate it. Thank you. I won't. That is what's so great about Story Hill, is people like that. It's all around. Yeah, it's I really, think. it really is. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Mama McGivern's key lime. Oh, was, I'm supposed to be in here? Well, what the? <laughs> <laughs> very nice. You're very funny. I so uh, nice. you can put that back. No, wait. Uh, come a little closer. <clears throat> Not that that's a lot closer. <laughs> Little's relative. What a great time we had in Story Hill. And it wouldn't have happened without the generous support of the following underwriters. Thanks, underwriters. The Greater Milwaukee Foundation's Ernest C. and Florence M. Shockey Fund. And by the David A. and Nancy E. Putz Fund. The Greater Milwaukee Foundation, inspiring philanthropy, serving donors, and strengthening communities now and for the future. Michaels Corporation, serving the energy, transportation, telecommunications, and utility industries. Michaels, constructing North America's infrastructure for our future. We Energy's Foundation at Wisconsin Public Service Foundation are proud to support public television. Together we create a brighter future for the communities we serve. ATC moves electricity from where it's generated to communities where it's needed. American Transmission Company, helping to keep the lights on, businesses running, and communities strong.